Hey guys, Librarian Tiff is coming back at you again to bring you yet another monthly reading wrap up. And this was my best reading month yet. You can't even see all the books I read because I read a good chunk of them on my Kindle. This month I read 10 books. I have quite literally never read 10 books in one month ever, ever. I am literally so over the moon over the fact that I read 10 books this month. It was truly such an amazing reading month. And not only did I read a lot of books, but I also found so many books that I love. I found my new all time favorite series. Like I found so many good books this month and I cannot wait to share every single one of them with you. So with that being said, let's get right on into it. The first book I read, which I did, I do want to preface by saying I did start this book in August and then I finished it in September and that is Travis by Mia Sheridan. This comes right after Archer's Voice and this is supposed to be Travis's redemption story and let me tell you, he got redemption in my book. I loved this story so, so much. I loved Travis and Haven. I love them as individuals but coming together, I feel like their relationship and their love story was so beautiful and just so raw and organic and just, just so pure. Like it just felt so pure and I absolutely loved it. You can definitely feel Travis's kind of character development. He still struggles with kind of being that person at times, but he always finds his way. And I feel like this was just so beautifully done and I absolutely loved it so, so much. I ended up rating this a four out of five stars. I really, really loved it. It was just so good. So sweet. It didn't do enough to be a five star, but it was so, so good. And if you read Archer's Voice and really, really loved that, I would really recommend this. And even if you haven't read Archer's Voice, I would highly recommend both of them. They're both so good. Such good stories. Archer's voice is very emotional. Had me crying so, so much throughout that book. And then this one is also emotional, but not in the same kind of sense. I was a little nervous that he wasn't going to get redemption, but he wholeheartedly did. And I loved it so much. Moving on, the next book I read is The Wicked Remain by Laura Paul. This is the second in a duology, which the first one is The Grimrose Girls, which I read last month. And I really enjoyed this. I feel like this was a beautiful way to end the duology. This one was a lot more interesting, a lot more fast paced and just a lot more fun to read than the first one. I still really enjoyed the first one, but I did like this one a little bit more. I really kind of already had that relationship with the characters and knew the story, like the story was already established. I feel like this book was just, again, a really good way to wrap up the duology. I think everything kind of comes full circle in a way that you would understand if you've read it. And I just think it was beautifully done and I really enjoyed it. This duology is like a YA fantasy kind of fairy tale type vibe. So if you you like that kind of thing, I think you would really enjoy these books. They were really, really fun. Definitely very different from anything I had ever read at this point, and I think they were really, really fun reads. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I think looking back, I would actually give it a 3.75. It wasn't quite a 4-star read for me, but I definitely think, what did I just say? I definitely think it was a little bit more than a 3.5, just because I liked it more than the Grimrose Girls, which I know 3.75 is really picky, but I feel like it just, it feels right. So that's the second book I read this month and I really, really, really liked it. I say, I just said really so many times, but it wasn't a five star. If you know, you know. Okay. The next book I read, I read on my Kindle and it is on Kindle Unlimited. The whole series is, and this is where we're getting into me finding my all-time favorite series, me finding a series that just feels like home. The characters feel like my best friends and it just, I'm getting emotional. I'm tearing up. This series just is everything to me. I read three of the books from this series this month, which we We'll obviously get into every single one of them. I need to finish the series, but I'm also like kind of hesitating because I don't really want it to end. And that is the Eden series by Devney Perry. So the first book I read is obviously Indigo Ridge, which is the first in the series. I thoroughly loved this book. I went into it completely blind. All I knew was it was some type of romance, but it's a romance that also has a mystery aspect in it. And it was just so, so fun. Basically the series follows the Edens, obviously, and there is six kids. So each book follows a different kid. And from my my understanding, I think we're going in like age order. So the first one followed Griffin. He's the oldest boy. He's the oldest out of all of them. And his love interest is Winslow. Winslow is a cop. She ends up becoming the chief of police in the wonderful town of Quincy, Montana. <sighs> I'm getting like chills thinking about these books and the town and the series and the characters and everything. I just love it so much. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so 
it has a mystery aspect to it along with the romance and it was so so good this one definitely had a lot less spice than the other two that i've read it was pretty closed door they didn't explain much you kind of knew what was happening but they didn't go into very much detail and i honestly kind of liked that because it made the relationship feel a lot more real and raw and more emotionally connected than physically connected even though you kind of like can tell they are sleeping together a lot i just loved it so so much it was so good rated at a four and a half out of five stars thoroughly loved it i actually read that book in the this video ends when i get a five star read so if you haven't seen that video you can go watch it and you can kind of see some of my reactions in that video and then the next book i read immediately after that was juniper hill which is the second in the series and so far this is my all-time favorite in the series this is an absolute five star read for me six star read it just hit home because this one follows knox who is the second oldest and his love interest is memphis and she is a single mom now i am obviously not a single mom or maybe that's not obvious to some of you but i am not a single mom i do have a husband and my son's father who is in his life there's so many things that are said in that book that relate to motherhood that i just felt so deeply to my core that i could relate to like literally holding your baby and trying to get them back to sleep at like one or two in the morning and they just won't go to sleep and they're crying so you're crying with them so many things like that that i have experienced and i can relate to because i've been there and that aspect of it made it so amazing but also Knox was just such a sweetheart he literally just should set the standard okay for single moms out there looking for love or who potentially would meet someone that they want to pursue a relationship with he should set the standard because there's things he did in that book that were just so unbelievably sweet and just so caring and maybe to like people who aren't parents would look at that and be like it, that's not a big deal but it is such a big deal and he truly just you could just feel how fiercely he loved her like how unbelievably in love he was with this girl like you could just feel it it was so obvious and that book had me so emotional i cried so many times throughout reading that book not because it was necessarily sad but because it was so sweet and i just loved it so much it was so good i'll literally never get over that book or Knox and memphis like i just won't it was so so good i just loved it so much i just i just i could go on and on about it for so long but we're gonna leave that one at that so after reading juniper hill i went into addicted to you by krista and becca i just hit my face did you see that <laughs> anyways by krista and becca ritchie i really have been wanting to read this for quite some time and i ended up putting it on my tbr last month because i got a prompt that let me put it on my tbr i am so glad i read this i was really nervous going into it that the high expectations i held for this book in this series was going to make Make it not as good because so many people love this series and love Lily and Lowe and I was really scared that it wasn't gonna live up to that for me but it wholeheartedly did if you don't know what it's about it follows two addicts he's addicted to alcohol and she's addicted to sex and they've kind of been in a fake relationship for years they kind of have feelings for each other but they don't know if the other one has feelings for them and if you know the fake dating trope is my favorite and I was eating it up and wow this book is just so good I truly understand the hype when people say that Lily and Lo are soulmates. I fully wholeheartedly felt it while reading this book. They are just good and bad together. If you know, if you've read it, you know what I mean. But like, I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> Moral of the story is it was so good and they really are soulmates. Like their love for each other is just so fierce. Like I'm really loving that word today. It's so fierce and you can just feel it. I ended up also giving this a five star. So I had two five stars back to back, which was absolutely incredible. I just started two series and absolutely fell in love with them as we continue this wrap up like you're just gonna see like i just had such amazing reads this month and this was incredible if you haven't read this and you haven't started the series i would highly recommend doing it because it was so wow wow because it was so good and then of course after finishing this i had to immediately go into ricochet which is the second one this was also so so good seeing their progression this one mainly follows lily but kind of seeing her really trying to fight this addiction of sex and it's like that's a normal part of an adult life is having sex like that is just a normal thing i'm i keep wanting to say watch because reading these felt like i was watching a movie but kind of reading and seeing her working through this addiction and trying 
trying to figure out how she can conquer this addiction when it is something that you can't just necessarily give up cold turkey like alcohol or like drugs. It's something that if you're in a relationship, you're going to be doing those things. And so that was so interesting and it was a very emotional ride, but it was so, so good. I just, again, love the series. I love the characters. The found family aspect in these books is absolutely incredible. I can't wait to continue this series and to then go into the Calloway Sister series because they're kind of intertwined. It was just so good. I ended up giving this one a four and a half out of five stars. Not quite a five star, but this one was so, so good. Yeah, I just love the series. Again, if you haven't read it, please start it. It's so, so good. The next book I ended up reading was Garnet Flats, which is the third in the Eden series. So I obviously read it on my Kindle. Wow, I loved this one almost as much as I loved Juniper Hill. This one follows Talia, who is one of the twin sisters, and her love interest is Forrest, who is a UFC fighter, and he is the middleweight champion. First and foremost, I love watching UFC fights. Me and Makai will kind of get into moods where we want to watch them, and then we'll go on like ESPN Plus and just watch a ton of them because they're so fun to watch. And so I loved reading about a UFC fighter, the romance of it. This one, the kind of vibe of this one, is like they used to date something bad happened and they broke up and now it's seven years later is it seven or was it eight seven or eight years later and now he's showing back up trying to get her back it was just so good it was just so good oh my god when I tell you when I tell you that like this series I've said this in other videos I've said this on my goodreads I've said this on Instagram before I say what I have already said this series is going to become my personality okay we all know Miss Sarah and Magnolia Parks okay they are like the this. We know Destiny and Akatar are like this. Tiffany in the Eden series are like this, okay? I'm never going to shut up about it because I simply cannot. This series feels like home to me. It feels like meeting your best friend and just knowing they're gonna be your best friend for the rest of your life. It's those nights where when you were a kid and you were with your best friends and you were staying up super late because it was summer and the sun was out late and you were just riding your bikes around the neighborhood. It is the best feeling possible for me reading these books and I I just remember thinking like watching their videos and being like, man, I want to love a series the way that they love these series. I want to feel that. And I, I understand and I feel it and I'm literally tearing up. I'm literally tearing up. I just can't. I'm, I, again, I'm never going to shut up about it. I gave Garnet Flats a five out of five stars as well. So good. Literally loved that book so much. That's the next book I read. And then moving on, the next book I read, which is going to be in an upcoming reading vlog. So stay tuned for that because it's a very fun reading vlog. And that is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. Wow. This book was a roller coaster. This book was a ride. I have had this on my physical TBR for quite some time and I've been wanting to read it for a while because By a Thread is one of my all-time favorite books ever. I love that book so, so much. Like that book did something to me when I was reading it. I don't know. So I really wanted to read more books by her because I loved her writing in that book. And even though her books are really long, just the way her writing is makes it feel like they're not as long as they are. And it also, she writes in such a way where you just want all that content. You want all those pages. You want all those words because you need it. Okay. The way she writes, you just need it. So wow. I barely said anything about this book in particular. Anyways, I really loved this. I loved Knox Morgan, Knox and Naomi. I just loved them. The whole dynamic they had and just their relationship and the connection and the banter, just everything about it in this book. It did everything I needed it to. It was so, so good. I annotated this a lot. I did most of the annotations on my Kindle because I did go back and forth, but I do want to go through on my Kindle and make my annotations that I made on my Kindle in my physical copy. But like there was things he would do or he would say that I was just like, oh, are you kidding? Are you kidding? The story of this is just so dynamic. There's so much going on. It's very complex. It's just done in such a beautiful way. You fall in love with the town. You fall in love with all of the side characters that you're getting to know. It was just so, so good. And I thoroughly loved it. I ended up giving it a four and a half out of five stars. Not quite a five star read. I feel like the whole like big conflict that kind of happened towards the end of this book, for some reason, I don't know how to explain how it felt to me. It just felt kind of like weird, like not out of pocket 
pocket, but also kind of out of pocket. I don't know if that makes sense, but I don't know how else to describe it. But other than that, like I really, really loved it. I loved the story and everything about it. So four and a half out of five stars. So, so good. And then also in that reading vlog coming up, we read The Deal by L. Kennedy. This is a hockey romance. And going into this, I was very nervous. I wasn't going to like it because I have read Bad Girl Reputation by her. And I didn't particularly love that book. I think at the time I gave it a three and a half stars, but looking back, I'd probably give it like a two and a half. Like it was fun and all, but like also it just did nothing for me. I didn't really care about the characters, didn't care about the story. So I was really worried that this was going to be the same way, but it was not, but it was not. Oh my God. From the second I opened this book, I mean, the second I cracked this bad boy open and started reading, I was hooked. I was obsessed with the characters. I was obsessed with Garrett and with Hannah. I just wholeheartedly fell in love with this book. There is just things in this book that he does for her that were just so selfless. Like he was just so selfless with her. He really always put her first, I feel like. And it was just such an amazing book. I really loved it. I gave it a four and a half out of five stars. I do want to continue this series. This is the only one I own, but I'm hoping to continue the series. It is on Kindle Unlimited. So maybe I'll just download one on Kindle Unlimited one day if I'm feeling a hockey romance and continue it. But I really, really loved it. It was so, so good. And then I didn't actually finish this book, but I just want to mention a DNF, okay? Because I did DNF a book this month and I just would like to tell you what it is and why. So we have If I Never Met You by Mari McFarland. Farlin, I think is how you say it. I'm not sure. So I DNF'd this. I want to say I got to page like 80 or something and I did actually listen to a lot of it on Audible. Okay, stick with me. So basically what had happened was I started this book and I read the first chapter and then I went to bed and then I woke up the next day and I was trying to read the second chapter and I just every time I was picking it up and reading it, I felt like I was stupid. Like this is a romance book. Okay, it's not like a fantasy. There's not world building. I shouldn't have to feel stupid when I'm reading a romance book. And so I was like, why do I feel dumb. Why do I keep having to reread things? Because I'm not understanding what they're saying. Like I was just so confused for some reason. So I was like, I'm going to get audible because I had never had it before. I'm going to get the audiobook and I'm going to listen to it to maybe get me into the story. So I did that. The second the narrator started talking, I understood why I felt so stupid. And it is because the author of this is Scottish. So a lot of the vernacular, a lot of the slang that they were using is just not slang that I would typically use in my day to day life because I am not Scottish. I am not from Scotland. And obviously they're still speaking English, but there was just a lot of things they were saying that was just confusing me. And then it's also in third person. So the two combined were just not clicking in my head for some reason. And that probably makes me sound stupid. Okay. You can think I'm stupid. That's fine. Some, whoa, sometimes I really am. So I listened to quite a few chapters on Audible and then I started trying to read it again and I just could not get into it. I think it really is the fact that it was, you know, kind of written in a way that I'm not used to, but then also I just didn't care about the story. I didn't care about the characters. I feel like there was a lot, a lot, a lot of this book. Like the main romance in this book hadn't even started in those 80 pages. It didn't even come close to starting. I feel like we got too much of that beginning portion of like what the beginning of the story is that I just couldn't get involved. I couldn't get invested. I didn't care. I didn't care about the characters, literally nothing. It, it made me feel nothing. I did DNF this, but I thought I would tell you guys. Next book I read, I also read on my Kindle which is also going to be in an upcoming reading vlog. And someone commented on my Goodreads when I reviewed this book saying they hoped that this was going to be in a reading vlog. And I am here to tell you it is. So get excited because it's coming. I promise it's coming. That is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Wow. This book, I... <laughs> I'm still filming the reading vlog that that book is going to be in and I still have yet to give my review in that vlog because I finished that book and I quite literally like set my Kindle down and sat still for probably five to ten minutes just with like a blank expression on my face just like what? huh? Why are we serious? I have to wait till December to get the, to get more. I was in a bit of denial, I think, honestly, but the book was really good. I feel like it had a bit of a slower start, not in a slow start way where I wasn't invested or I wasn't intrigued. It just felt a little bit slower at the beginning. You feel me? You feel me? I really loved the story. The magic and like the fantasy aspect of this was really, really cool. Also the romance part of this was just so cute. So wholesome. It just seemed so pure. Like there 
their love for each other just seems so pure. Roman is just truly seems like such a sweet, sweet soul. And I just really loved this book. I loved them together, Iris and Roman. They were just so sweet together. And again, their love was just so beautiful. Like that is the best way I can put it is their love was truly wholeheartedly so, so beautiful. I just loved it so, so much. It is so good. If you haven't read it, I wholeheartedly agree with the hype. It is so, so good. And you should definitely read it if you haven't already. I will warn you that it ends on a horrible note. It's such a cliffhanger. And I cannot wait till December till the second one comes out because I will be reading it immediately. Because like I said, I was sitting there for quite a few minutes just what but it was so so good i rated this a four and a half out of five stars i really really loved it it was so so good i feel like because i felt like the beginning was a slow start i can't give it a five star but i do feel like the second one has the potential to be a five star read we shall see but i did really love it and i think the story and just everything about it was so so good so that is actually all the books i have read i am in the middle of reading another book which is called scarlet princess by robin d something i don't Oh, no. I'm in the middle of reading that but obviously since I haven't finished it I can't tell you my thoughts and stuff but so far I am really really enjoying this book that is all the books I read I am so unbelievably overjoyed that I read 10 books this month it was such an amazing reading month and I just am hoping for an even better month in October my October TBR will either be up the day or the two days after this goes up. So stay tuned for that because it is a very fun one and I cannot wait for you guys to see that. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already because we have a lot of fun over here and we want you to join the fun. <laughs> I love you guys so, so much and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Wow, that was fun. I really like this background. I feel like I need to film with this background more because I really liked it. <sighs> There's something there. I still, I still, whoa. Okay, whatever is on my glasses is pissing me off. Pause. I love, oh, so I just ripped that off my pop socket on accident. Okay, let's pop that back on. And his love interest in the book is why can I not think of her name? What the hell? It did it for me. It never, it did, wow. What? Gonna be in an upcutting, cutting?